How's the band going? <clears throat> Band's going good. Yeah, it's good. It's um, we um, we worked out that this band's been together now for about seven years. Jesus. Like, yeah, it's in the spark. So when we joined um, a live network, that was seven years ago. Wow. That was like has that like flown by? It has. Yeah. yeah, completely. But it's. It was also like this year was like ten years since I've left uni, mm. and so I don't know. I just. I um, said we were at a gig over Christmas, and I just said, "So, it's been ten years since uni. Everybody happy? What? They, what? In ten years' time from now, what is it mm. you want to do?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it kind of started off a conversation. <laughs> um, you know, Chris, obviously, you know, Chris. Um, yeah. He, I mean, he's really, really into his teaching. Mm. Like, he loves it. Absolutely loves it, and he's great at it as well. Um, he's great at performing as well, but. Um, he wants to do more teaching mm. and be a little bit more, um, yeah, a little bit more to do with that. You know, I think he wants that to be his main income. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, it kind of gave me the kick up the ass really to kind of go, well, what is it that you want to do with your life? Mm. Um, and it's been great. You know, when I came out of uni, the only thing I really wanted to do was earn a living playing music and I've done it yeah. and that's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think I've just got lazy over the last couple of years, especially like, not pushed ourselves because you know like the weddings as long as you can play the songs yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're all right do you, so do you uh, mean like lazy is in like just practicing or um or just like other things as well like like in music pra- <laughs> yeah practicing definitely um because if you've got nothing really to mm. that you're aiming for it's quite hard to keep yourself motivated and i, yeah. I love practicing as you mm. know like when we were away in yeah, the middle yeah, yeah. east and stuff i used to love it um and i still do um but since kind of thinking to go down the cruise ship route but the cruise ship route not as a function band like we've mm. done but as an actual show band member where you have to read and play different types of music and all that, that sort of stuff mm. that's it man I mean, it's I, nice I, I i think you're definitely right it's like um you can't uh, yeah the, the motivation to practice it isn't really is it's gonna be harder to get or, or be there if you've not got like something you want to go achieve <clears throat> you know mm. like like you say if same for me as well the, the wedding band circuit and stuff it's like yeah, you have the songs that you got to play, but like mm-hmm. um, other than that, like playing wise, there's not really much else to be achieved except for being able to perform at this certain level. Do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. play the songs yeah, to a certain standards. Like, yeah, I, I totally know what and, you mean. I don't, I don't know if you found it as well, but like, because <clears throat> there are some bands on the agency who are, you know, they're amazing as mm. well, and um, you know, the scale of the gigs that they're doing are great. But mm. I don't know whether you found it, but it's still a function room. Mm. at the end of the day so you could be playing an award ceremony but really when you look at it it's a function mm. you're playing on a stage for a function room and you're still playing Mr Brightside and Sex yeah, on yeah. Fire <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that and I'm grateful for the killers to write it because yeah. we also worked out that we've done like 850 weddings in the last seven years wow. and I think we've done Brightside at every single one yeah it's one <laughs> so, of those songs isn't it it's like standard songs that like yeah. I don't know time and time again we will just not fail in uh no. in just getting a load of drunk people together yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it doesn't matter man if it's like dorothy yeah. who's a million years old or yeah, it's like yeah. a five-year-old girl yeah they all love it yeah yeah it's, it's, just, it's just insane energy to that song or or those songs and there's just something like yeah yeah Crazy. i wish i'd write some more to be honest give us something else to yeah <laughs> there's <laughs> a different variety in it <laughs> yeah, yeah so how's your band going how's penthouse going it's good man like it's last year was like way better uh, obviously uh, it was our second year um so our first year which was like you know just the very first year so it wasn't gonna be anything amazing but then yeah last year was great um just like it was it was just like a lot more achieved in last year and then you know you hope with anything that you uh are pursuing that you know, each year or, or all the time, it's just like progressively getting better, like better gigs yeah. or, or just better arrangements or, you know, just the band is tighter and stuff like that. Like, you know, so just anything we can do um, to better ourselves and stuff. But yeah, at the moment it's going good. Still not where I want it to be um, exactly, but... Where, where do you want it to be? Um, so I just want to be playing bigger events. Like you say, like it's a function room at the end of the day, but there's like, there's so many bands out there um obviously it's like a really crowded market like a lot of different wedding markets are i guess um but yeah there's i just see a few bands like playing some of the like what seem like from an outside perspective 
like to be incredible gigs you know like location yeah. or whatever um and it just as like yeah just like pushing the boundaries like just seeing what else you can achieve with a band um mm. rather than uh you know not like your band like your band's doing so fucking good but like uh, there's a lot of bands out there that you know they just get to a certain level and then they just plateau and yeah. there's, there's no real drive to like push it to somewhere else you know and, it, and it's difficult to do that as well because there's other people in the band like you just said like chris and stuff like and that's one thing i learned real quick was um as much as i want to push the band and do all these different things there's like four other people there that have their own music ambitions and things like that so it's like you've really got to um i i think just understand like okay everyone's got their own ambitions drives and stuff and whether they're part of this or not like it's all good um and mm. as long as they are a part of it then you know we'll do our best you know and if they leave we'll come back you know so, so are you are you basically the band leader for that band yeah yeah i i, I run the whole yeah. band I, I do everything like so so does it so with what obviously with what you're saying is you want the bands to get to a certain point and everyone's got their own stuff going on which mm. is obviously every band's in that yeah, situation but that situation, man. do you find it do you find it as a band leader difficult knowing that and knowing what you can push and knowing that you're gonna to have to debt people out especially like with a singer for example mm. like if someone's going to book a band most of the time it's on the singer isn't it um and yeah, that's that's that is a hard thing and, that, and that's i mean i guess chris I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not so different because a singer is a singer at the end of the day. If that's the mm-hmm. face you have on the promotion video or yeah. whatever or whatever kind of video, I mean you're selling a product. Most couples like bride and groom or whatever, um, the first thing they look at is the singer. Do they like yeah. the tone of voice, male or female? Like um, you know, do you know like that kind of stuff? Do they like the songs? But really, the first thing they come across is do they like the singer? And then mm. like you know, we play so many gigs. In, in my band where um, it's constant comments on the singer. Like, we love yeah. the singer's voice, really love you guys, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Musicians are always second, <laughs> like, no matter where you go, yeah. what you do. It's always been that way, and it probably always will be that way. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's just, uh, you. that's probably the most difficult thing because, as you say, everyone's got their own ambitions and stuff, and especially if it's the singer um, who the band is getting sold on, if that guy's not available, then it's like, okay, that's a little bit more tricky than being able to replace yeah. a drummer, a bass yeah. player, someone who kind of could be faceless, really, like, to a certain extent. Yeah, definitely. You know? which, which has its pluses and its minuses. I mean, in yeah. some ways, it's yeah, yeah. if you play that instrument and you, it almost gives you a little bit of freedom because mm. you know yeah, you yeah, can yeah. be yes. replaced if necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, example for Chris, for example, I think it's been a lot of pressure on him because... Mm. He's got other things that he wants to do, but he knows that if he says he doesn't want to do it anymore, that impacts me and Dan's mm. income drastically yeah. because without him, the band just doesn't doesn't happen. So yeah, what, um, what have, you, have you been in any situations where Chris like hasn't been available for a gig, but you do the gig anyway, or and like do you, do you have do you know what? someone? Uh, we have a couple of people. Um, we've had a couple of. It's been a couple of times where Dan hasn't been able to do the bass. And I know Chris has asked you to depth that you've been mm. busy, or we've yeah, had yeah. Dave, who's the original singer and bass player. Right, right. Um, but um, no, I mean, Chris has done gigs where he thought he was going to follow through while singing because <laughs> he felt so bad. He was <laughs> oh, literally shit. vomiting in between sets. Like, I mean, the guy's an absolute trooper. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, I mean, I don't know how he could stand on a couple of the gigs because he, mm. he got ill just like everyone does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And he, he kept going. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad that he's finally said, mm. this is what I want to do. This is what I want to work towards. Mm. And like I said at the start, it's given me the impetus to really go, okay, well, mm. oh, okay, well, it's time to revisit what I was looking at doing before this band really started. Mm. Um because after uh, after we did Oman, what did I do after that? Oh, I did a oh we did a ferry ship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did a ferry ship, <laughs> good old ferry <laughs> ship. <laughs> so we did that same ship again last year. Mm. Yeah, well, as, a, uh, as a band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. As a band, yeah. Um, but um, I remember before the Sparks probably started, I was due to go on another contract for someone completely different mm. um, in China. Um, and the singer got onto The Voice USA or something like that. So the, the guy cool. said to me, well, it might not happen. Mm. No hard feelings if you can get a gig, you know, if you can get some regular work. It's obviously you're broke like we always are. Mm. Um, 
and yeah, this kind of happened and we said at the time, well, let's go for it. Let's try and join an agency. Let's try and mm. make the living out of it. And we've, we've done it. And it's, um, you know, Dan's been in the band for five years, which I couldn't believe. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's good, but it's, yeah. it's time to try something else. Yeah.